Dive 31, Dive 16, Engine 21, Power 32, Medic 16, Medic 21, Battalion Chief I, Test Call, now page Q, 29B, at CCSC West on France, 14 hours, now Dive 31, Dive 16, Engine 21, Power 32, Medic 16, Medic 21, Battalion Chief 5, Test Call. Got together with uh, Cherry Creek State Parks and started coming up with the idea of doing a joint agency dive drill, kind of a preparedness drill to get um, South Metro crews integrated with the Cherry Creek State Parks crews and run an actual dive event. Unfortunately, they happen every year um, and it's beginning of the season. We wanted to get out, work out the kinks, get radio channels worked out um, and run through a good positive rep for all of the crews involved. It's extremely important. This, both of our reservoirs in our district are extremely busy. Uh, middle of the summer, um, we do run calls here and we want to be able to plan for those calls, um, get a good rep. Um, it's a nice day out today and bring everybody together and get through a uh, you know, solid rep like we did today. They didn't know about it till this morning. They don't even know it's a dive drill. So right now we haven't been given too much. Uh, we're waiting to hear how many people are in the water or if there's someone that we're diving for. We're really trying to decide if it's a boat-based dive or a shore-based dive. So yeah. at some point, if somebody's sitting in that seat, they can tell us so how much we On the north side of the reservoir, by the Dixon Grove, take the area. So it sounds like there's a crew on scene right now with one one patient on the shore. Uh, that's the only information we have right now. So we're gonna test that initial response plan for Dive Alert 3, getting our guys on the rescue, on the boat, right? Getting your dive gear on there. I'm trying to get them to bring their MDT on the boat now. They can get coordinates and everything off that. They're about 200, 200 feet off the shoreline. We're in about 20 feet of water. They're 20 feet from the shore. It sounds like they have another person that's out in the water right now. Unknown status, though. Even though this call came in, what does that mean, you guys? Well, we want to make sure all our gears are working in order, that like we're in tip top we shape, that we've uh, gone through the all the steps, right and we're going to run a good call. Because Realistically, this is exactly what a real call looks like. So we want to make sure we do it well. Updated location is going to be more towards the power loop side of the water. Um, that's still about 200 feet from the shoreline. We're still in about 20 feet of water.
sounds like we have a boat in the water with one person still unaccounted for possibly and since it's way offshore we're going to be launching the boat to start a boat based dive. Dispatch, dive 31. Dive 31. We'll be on scene, Cherry Creek State Park, West Boat Ramp. Dive 31 will be assuming command, we'll be a new rescue strategy. Launching the boat from the West Boat Ramp and unifying command with State Park. If you can update best location to the MDT, Dive 31 will have our MDT on Boat 31. I'm going to be here on scene to West Boat Ramp. You have command in the rescue strategy. We're launching the boat from the ramp and unifying command with Cherry Creek State Parks. We will update the location of the center. Thank you. So at this point, we're getting ready to launch the boat and we're gonna have Lane drive us down there, backs up to the water, right when we get really close to the water. That's when we're gonna pull some of our braces off the back there and the front. I'll get the batteries fired up and get the boat going, make sure we're good to go there. And then we'll all load up together and uh, go to the last scene point. Because the trailer is shorter than the length of the rig that's backing it, it makes it very difficult. So it's best to get lined up extremely square and straight so that when you're backing it up, it doesn't whip from side to side. A little different than when you have a pickup truck backing this up. It's a lot easier. A lot of different factors, but I mean, we're not gonna do anything that's gonna delay our um, ability to get in the water and get to that last scene point. There's different factors like other people using the boat ramps that we have to deal with, but in this case, they're all clearing out of the way. So as soon as she gets down there, it's really just, we're ready to rock. Joe's our backer down there. He's helping Lane get it back in the water. And he's gonna stop her just short of the water and he'll be the one that's gonna pop all the straps off the back um, and make sure we're clear to actually launch. You good there? Just an updated location. Uh, we are currently at 25 feet, the last unit location point. Copy, if you can mark the spot with a H float and log on the GPS coordinate with a south venture dispatch. Clear up front, Joe, whenever you're ready. Front's clear, if we're, we're ready to back. Yep, batteries are on. One thing we think about today, I'm primary, he's backup and he's 90%er. So the last thing you want to do is exhaust the primary backup and 90% divers by making them do all these tasks and getting tired and heated because this is really hot. Alright, keep the bumps. So you try to figure out that's why I'm not doing a lot because I'm the first one in. I'm just looking at my gear, relaxing, trying to stay cool. Dispatch district one, you can mark the boat launched. Boat launched, ten thirteen. Tower 32, I'm going to have you manage the west boat ramp. You can keep two medics on the west boat ramp, one for medical transport and one for divers. And the east side, correction, the west side of the west boat ramp is for fire department operations. Taking copies, west boat ramp, they're ready to launch the boat. Tower 32 doing shore medical on the west boat ramp. That's correct, James. 
single person in a kayak rolled out and was witnessed either by state parks or by witnesses on shore, and they saw them go under the water. That's when we got the call, and we responded to the West Boat ramp and took command and responded out here. State Parks was able to give us the location where the victim was um, to the best of their ability. You have to throw the big anchor out the front, and then we're going to back up. The kayaker was somewhere in between the buoys. I'm going to have the front blown out, drift back. Okay. I'm do a loop around the other side of that age flow. Oh, three, one, going. Contact so what we're looking for here is any um, inconsistencies here, um, and then we'll mark it with a float. Copy that. Again, the park's boat's transport to the west boat ramp. The Dive 16 is on scene. Uh, you want them at your location? Very long. Just far out, 20 feet to your left. Back there, Joe. Toss it. There was no lasting point from the shore. Uh, best location was where the park ranger was marked out of the coast. We came in and located the victim on sonar. Now it's to the right. This is right in between those two markers. That is a target representing uh, a victim. A uh, kayaker yep. that went down about a half an hour. All right, we're ago. gonna drift right over that spot. And uh, we found that on our 40, 40 side minutes scan minutes. sonar. So yep. now we've Just replaced a couple of anchors and we'll begin a 360 sonar, How just much like a radar, and that'll help guide our divers right into that target. The three buoys that are just behind the boat. If you look at them, the one on the starboard side in the middle, in the middle of those two. It's closer to where the last point was. Copy, copy. Putting our anchors down to start at 360. You can continue to guide us again. Drop an anchor. And then we set our anchors and we go to a 360 degree sonar and we're able to guide our diver right into um, the location of the victim as, as we can tell with sonar. That could be in. Real life kayakers, five to six feet tall. A five gallon bucket is two feet tall. Is that what we're seeing? Yeah, possibly right back here to our right, which would make sense if they said it was in line with that second buoy. There's also something. like we're just about on top of it. Right guys? Like just about on top where they saw it. Tell, if you want to have him start doing a pie pattern, mm -hmm. working on the left hand side of the boat, sure. about five foot intervals. Okay. And uh, we'll do a pie pattern from bow to stern. Okay. And uh, if he doesn't find it, we'll go to our second diver and we'll do the other side. Gotcha, so starting with this pattern and then we'll go to this one. Yeah. Okay yeah. Garrett, I was mistaken. We're gonna start with uh, bow to stern patterns back and forth. And then if we don't find anything here, we'll have Carbo go in and long. pattern off the back. What was your air? Can you have a second? Yep, it's cool. Thank you. Great, good, best, man. Diver in the water, 1045. Both of your 15 minute fights are about thicker. Describing, I'm recording their starting air pressures, the max depth that they see, and we do five minute checks as far as air consumption, what depth they're at, and if they run into any encounters. And we also do a pre dive and post dive check to make sure all gear and equipment's in place prior to divers entering the water and making sure they're safe and neurologically intact when they exit the water. Nice, you're getting a little closer to me. Try to swim away if you can. All right, that's five. Stop there, left hand search. The sonar is kind of like a flashlight. It shines uh, sound energy through the water. So what you see with the diver is a return on their air bubbles. And then you'll see a shadow on the other side from those air bubbles. 
where the sonar energy is blocked by the diver or the air. Now Definitely. you're swimming to your right. You've gone too far. Our boat Our is boat positioned is over the last point. point. If you can, if you can run, a run a side scan, scan. Yeah. see if you can get a good, get a good return. return. Staying, Staying to the west to the of our location. location. What we're always battling with is time. Uh, we have a 60 or 90 minute rescue window where we really feel like uh, a, a victim is viable, that we can bring them back to life uh, without deficits. Uh, so locating them as quick as possible and getting them transported to a, a hospital is, uh, that's our whole objective. It'll be out towards your left now with the direction you're facing. It'll be towards your left with the direction you're facing. You're coming in towards me. All right, go ahead and stop there. All right, I'm gonna give you five feet and then go left-hand search. More information we get up front um, if occupants have life vests on, last seen points are the most important thing for us. If you're um, a bystander on the shore and see it, if you can look across the lake and uh, reference where you saw the kayak tip over, the jet ski crash, whatever it might be, um, and stay there till we get there, we're going to send somebody to interview um, to help pinpoint that last seen location because that's where the dive boat starts and then they work out um, with their sonar resources um, from there. So it's pitch black, um, it's cold, pretty cold, but you don't feel too cold, uh, about 27 feet deep. And so when you're looking at your gauge, you quite literally have to press it up against your mask in order to see all the numbers. Uh, so that just takes a little bit extra time. In terms of orientation, I mean, it truly is just nothingness. So some people actually will close their eyes um, when they're doing these searches, just because you're supposed to be moving one of your arms while you hold onto the rope on the other. Um, Otherwise, that's really about it. You're just listening to your comms buddy and you're breathing. That's really about it. This is a beautiful day and pretty calm, calm weather. Uh, often we get these calls when it's a storm, cold and windy. So the um, only unrealistic part about this is how nice a day it is. But in terms of getting a call for someone who's fallen out of a kayaker without a life jacket on and gone underwater, um, we get these calls regularly. Well, for the public, I think our main goal here is right safety um, and then when they're being out in the water being responsible it's same thing with a vehicle um, when you're out there you know you're wearing the life jacket you're being observant of you know others that are around you um, and then if possible kind of being that aid if you know there was somebody in the water or um, a vessel that is in distress unfortunately we we do run these calls and the, the best thing the public can do is wear a life vest um, over at Chatfield, they have the gravel ponds, and we see people all the time on paddle boards without life vests on, and life vests do save lives. Um, as you see in our videos today, we're required to wear them anytime we're within 10 feet of the waterline, on the boats. Um, it's that big of a deal, um, and encourage everybody to wear that life vest when around the water. Divers out of the water. Victim's been transferred to State Parks boat. CPR in progress. They're responding to the West Boat Ramp for transport. That was pretty realistic. I feel like this is how we would run the call. So whether you're expecting to find a bucket or a body, it, it felt all the same to me. All of you that are here, if everybody's in quarters in service. This is the Dive Alert 3 response to the West Boat Ramp. We would really love for people to take away from this training is how important it is to have a life jacket on. Um, you never know when your uh, boat's gonna get swamped by a wave, even on a nice day. And the water temperatures in Colorado remain really cold throughout the year. So um, having people in life jackets, it, it saves lives.